Hi, my name's Corinne Brad, and today I want to show you what you can do with your brother Scan and Cut SDX 1200 machine. And in fact, what you can do with most of the Scan and Cut machines, I think all of the Scan and Cut machines in the range. What we've got here is a library of patterns that you can use. They're pre-stored into the machine and they can be enlarged, reduced, flipped, duplicated. It saves you hundreds of pounds in buying sets of dies in different sizes. So you can take a simple shape and you can repeat it, making it three mil smaller every time for like a, some sort of architectural design even, like this one here. Quite a plain card, suitable for a man, but you've got a lovely sort of gothic swirl on there. And that's just with a simple scroll design. Or you can use some of their more extensive designs, like this peacock, and just reduce it down slightly each time and layer it up so you've got a three-coloured, three-dimensional design. Or something cute like these little Russian dolls. And what you can do with them is you can create an offset background to fill in the gap. So I'll show you very simply how to get started with your SDX. And uh, we'll have some fun. First of all, in your accessory drawer, you have a pointy stick. This is great because it means you can be very precise on the screen. Don't use your fingertip because it is actually too big. And when you're on your home page, if you select pattern, it will bring up a selection of different designs that you can use. And they're all stored within these individual libraries. You have things like simple shapes. You have things like phrases. We've also got several fonts that are available. So you can do your own phrases. And amongst other things, I mean, there's frames, there's patchwork designs, there's stencil designs. We have some very nice, what I call doily designs. And they're quite intricate. You can see from here, this one here, this heart doily. It's quite intricate and they make great backgrounds if you want to make a simple pretty card with perhaps just a phrase across the middle of it. But further down the list, we've got things like these little horses, owls, hearts, the Russian dolls and the peacock that you've seen before. So let's start with a horse design. Now the machine will automatically set the size at about 10 centimeters square. And that's fine because you can enlarge and reduce as you wish to do it afterwards. So we'll just set him onto the design mat like so. And we'll pop him in the middle. And if you want to enlarge and reduce him, you hit edit, object edit, and make sure that the design that you want has actually got its little red selection box around it. And this button in the top left, which is the enlargement and reduction size. Now on these pre-designed intricate designs, you can't change the dimensions. They, they go in ratio to each other. With the simpler designs like squares and circles, you can hit this button here and then you can adjust the measurements so you can turn your square into a rectangle. You can turn your circle into an oval. But for something like this, you don't want a long horse or a very tall horse, you want to try and keep him in the same dimensions that he's been designed. So you can either choose height or width and just enlarge or reduce. And you're able to enlarge these designs to just below the width of your mat. So something like a square design, you could cut him out of a sheet of 12 by 12 and in fact, you could cut a whole selection of them out of coloured sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock like this here, and you could line a nursery wall with them and make great murals. If you've got a rectangular design, you can also enlarge it so that it's as wide as a mat, but it's also longer, provided you've got a 24 inch long mat. But that's another demonstration for another day. So let's just take him back down to a more normal size of about 10 centimetres.
And what I want to do is I want to put an offset on him, like I've done here on the Russian dolls, so that when I put him on a coloured background, there's a different colour coming through his, the apertures on there. So if we OK this, because I'm happy with him at 10 centimetres, and then this button here, which is like a double line swirl button, this is the offset button. If you click on that, it will show in green where the new cutting line will be for another piece of paper. I'm going to give him a slightly bigger offset of two millimetres and OK it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my original horse out of the way to leave the offset horse. And I'm just going to put my reading glasses on so that I make sure. What you'll find on the offset, it will also offset inside each aperture, aperture. And I want to get rid of these. I want a solid background. So if I hit this, this will turn the horse and all its components into separate individual holes. Normally what you want to do is you want to unify those patterns if you're enlarging and reducing because there's nothing worse than getting something perfect, wanting to move it to the other side of the screen and leaving half the bits behind. So what I should be able to do now is drag my horse away from its individual pieces and then select all of those individual pieces as one. Get rid of him. So just make sure that the pieces you want to keep are deselected. OK all the tiny pieces and just pop them in the bin, like so. So you have an outline and you have your horse to go on top of it. And we'll cut these from different colours of card. And then what you want to do is I want to make a slightly smaller horse and I want a slightly smaller horse that's flipped over. So we're going to edit each one of these and just reduce them down in size. So if my outline is 104 mil wide and my horse is 100 mil wide, I'm going to make a copy of each using the plus button. Make sure you select the right horse that you're uh, copying. I'm going to flip each over using the mirror button. And then I'm going to resize each one. So if I'm taking him down to 70, I'm going to take him down to 74, because that's allowing for the 2 mil offset all the way around. And we'll pop him in that bottom corner and him in that bottom corner. And then this way, what you can do is you can cut all four shapes in one pass. So, grab your cutting mat. Now the cutting mats always have a clear film on the top of them. Keep hold of this because it's invaluable for storage. It stops dog hair, cat hair, and your own hair getting stuck to the mat. The mat will have an arrow on the bottom here, which shows you the direction that it feeds into the machine. So if you look at your screen and you decide on perhaps the card blank that you want to put your horses on, I'm going to choose quite a plain card blank. And I'm going to choose a piece of bright pink for the background of my horse. And you can tell on the screen how big you need to make this. So it's about five inches square. And it's very weird. I find myself on here working between millimetres and inches. I'll cut on a, a metric mat, but in my head I'll be cutting something like an imperial sized piece of card. So we'll have a pink background for the horse, up here. We will make
the horse himself from Let's Have a Blue. And he can be slightly smaller because I know I've not got the offset to worry about. And then for your smaller horse, I need a piece that is about eight centimeters square for each of them. So let's have a green background. A little yellow horse. Now in an ideal situation, you would be a lot more careful about the size of card that you were cutting if you wanted to save waste. But the other great thing about the scan and cut is it has what we call a background scan function. And what it allows you to do is if you've got lots of offcuts of card, because we've all got lots of weird shaped pieces of coloured card that are too good to throw out, you can stick them all on your mat, you can get your machine to scan them, and they'll show up in colour on the screen so you can see which colour is which. And then you can just move your shapes around to get the most out of your pieces of card. So even if you, you know, you do a horse and then you end up putting some flowers around the horse so that you can just use up those scraps. But again, that's a demonstration for another day. So I'm just going to show you how quickly this cuts. Another great advantage actually of the SDX is how quiet it is. Um, Brother have come a very long way with the scan and cut machine. I've been using them now, it must be four or five years, I reckon. And you will see, because I'll be able to talk over this, how quiet it is. So once you've got your map, your map, your mat laid out, and you've got your pieces of card stuck firmly to it, feed it in arrow first by pressing this button here. And the blade that I have in here is a standard blade and the SDX has an automatic height adjustment. So you don't have to worry about changing the height adjustment of your blade. It would just, it would do it itself for you, which is a godsend. So just pop him in there. You're happy with your layout. Press OK. Press OK again and press OK until you get to the option to select. And you can either draw if you've got pen attachments in there or you can cut. Works through it and then just hit the green button to start. Now this is gonna take about three minutes to cut, which is a damn sight quicker than trying to do it yourself with a ruler and a craft knife. And you can see here, it's testing the height of the paper and the height of the mat before it starts cutting. So I'm going to be quiet for a minute, it makes a change I know, and you can just watch this work. So now it's just coming to the end of its cutting process and it's thrown the mat back out at me. So you can just click OK because it's finished cutting and the mat feed button to release the mat. Now the background shapes are very easy to remove and you can probably, if you've got fingernails, you may have noticed I don't actually have many fingernails today, you can probably just peel them off but it's safer to use a spatula because especially with some of these textured cards, if you're not careful you can ruck up the edges and they don't look so great when they're looking bird on the edges. So there are my two background horses. Just pop them there a second.
and these are my two intricately cut designs. Just ease them off the mat. Do not be tempted to try and pull it off in one fell swoop. Especially if you've got intricate designs, you might find that you tear the joins between the holes that have been cut and it ruins the whole project. But as you can see there, he's been cut out quite nicely. And then just use your spatula to take off the bits that have been left behind. And this spatula, what it will do is it will remove the surface debris, but it won't take off the glue that holds everything in place. Ooh. It's always worthwhile cleaning up your mat as soon as you finish cutting a project. Especially if you're doing intricate designs like this, the temptation is to think, oh, well, I'll do that later. And then you come to do a project in a hurry and you realise you've got to spend five minutes picking all the little bits of uh, paper off of it. So just do it while you've got it here. And then just take your acetate cover and pop it back over the top while it's out of the way. You have your pink background and you have your blue offset design. And what it's done is it's created a border all the way around it and it really lifts the project. So I'm just going to fix this onto the background with some sticky pads. Taking care not to put sticky pads over the cutout designs. And if you find that your cutout designs are quite thin, you can of course just cut a sticky pad in half and use a half width just on his bottom there. and place him onto the background like so. Do the same with your small one. Pop them in place like that. And then take a simple car blank. Actually, this one's quite nice. And pop your larger horse here and your baby horse. just in the front like so. So they're a very quick but very effective card, just like the other examples that we have here. And they make great colourful cards, great colourful greetings cards. Now you will see also that the pieces that I've cut out, I have quite a lot of excess card left over. Now if I was to try and cut another horse out of, say, this yellow piece of card, it would be not difficult to get it in the right place, but it wouldn't be the easiest thing in the world. But, if you pop 
your off cut on here. And what I'll do is I will actually show a, a, a more concise demonstration of this at some point. And you choose your small horse. So we'll go back to the design screen. We'll get rid of him. And we'll get rid of him. And we'll get rid of him. And we'll take him up here. If you okay him, so he's there in the middle of your mat, there is a button here which shows the scanner. And this is really clever. In fact, actually, I'm just going to move him to the middle so you can see more easily. So you feed your mat in as usual. And you hit the background scanning function. and leave your mat in there. The temptation is to get the mat out and get it out of the way so that you can carry on working. But if you have a look on the screen here, you can now see quite clearly where that piece of card is in relation to the design it wants to cut. So you could pick him up and pop him on there, or what you can do, if you edit him, using this rotation button, you can take him around 90 degrees, 180 degrees and pop him up there like so. He's still just a fraction too big so if you okay him and set your resize take him down about five centimeters five centimeters five millimeters and okay it and if you want to be doubly sure that you've got him in there once you've okayed it, you've got a magnifying glass here, and that enlarges the area of your screen that you're looking for. If you want to get in even closer, you can go to 200%, and he comes in really close, and you can just move him so he fits perfectly in the space that's left. So if you cut, and start. This should only take a minute. But I just want to show you how easy it is to use up all these scraps of card. So, you know, don't throw them away. You can always find a use for them. And especially with that whole background scan function, you're not going by eye just or just going by the measurements on the map. You can map, mat. You can actually look on screen and see exactly where it's going to cut in relation to the piece of card that you've scanned. So just give him a second. There you go. And there you go, you can see how well that's cut my other little Dala horse out. And the smaller you go, the more intricate these designs will become. And what I would recommend is just use a decent quality cardstock, not something that's going to fray too much when it comes off. And another point to bear in mind is if you're using a brand new cutting mat, it will be very sticky. So use the best quality cardstock that you can and be careful how you ease it off the mat. It's, it's one of those situations, you want a sticky mat, the last thing you want is your paper shifting around while you're cu cutting, but if you forget how sticky it is and try and rip a design off, then you are going to rip the paper, because paper is a rippable subject.
So there you go. And he can go to one side and at some point be used as a gift tag. So I hope that's given you some ideas as to what you can do with your scan and cut. And so this is an SDX 1200. Um, this has a couple of extra patterns on it and some more fonts on it. Uh, it has the automatic blade depth adjustment and it's very quiet. But you'll find all of the scan and cut machines have the ability to provide you with a library of patterns that you can enlarge and reduce so you can make layered designs like the peacock here. And even if you're not interested in doing something like that, you've got your own designs that you want to use, it's really handy to be able to make layered circles. And in fact, when I have my machine set up at home, if I'm doing a project for something totally different, if I need to draw a couple of circles, it's actually so much quicker just setting it on the machine and setting it to cut than it is drawing it with a compass and cutting it with a scalpel. So uh, it's one of those things that when you get one, you end up using it more and more and more, and then you start to wonder how on earth you live without it. So I hope you like that demonstration. I hope it's given you some idea of why this machine can actually, in the long run, save you a lot of money, especially on dies. And also, it saves you so much space. I've got cupboards of dies at home now that I don't use because I use this. And, um, and I can actually put this in a cupboard. So we will see you again very, very soon. I've got lots of other things to show you with the scan and cut machine. I've got some great scanning ideas and there'll be some templates, not on this demonstration, but on future demonstrations that you can download and you can use in your machine yourself. But we'll talk about that another day. Thank you very much for watching and take care. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.